Hi, I'm Marcus, I'm 23, and I've always been surrounded by girls. In drama club at school, at home, where I had three older sisters, and at my job. After all, I'm a security guard in the woman's state prison, and every day I am surrounded by several hundred women with different stories. I ended up falling in love with one of them. I'm going to tell you about what came of it and how we happened to meet. I will never forget how I first found myself alone with these women in baggy jumpsuits. It was my first day on the job. My partner, who had worked there for more than 10 years, had been making scathing jabs about my appearance all morning, calling me Justin Bieber. He kept doing it so that I wouldn't even think about making eyes at anyone, because any relationship with prisoners was forbidden, but I already knew that. Before dinner, I was sent to recount all the prisoners in Block A. It was a large room divided by partitions into many tiny rooms without doors. All the prisoners lined up in front of their beds and were checking out the newbie. Most of all that day, I remembered two of them. One that scared me to death and one that I uninspectedly liked. The first put a hand on my shoulder and winked slyly with her one good eye. They called her old woman because she had been there the longest. I told her to get back immediately, but I said it so timidly that internally I scolded myself for showing weakness. But by the end of the rounds, I had completely forgotten about it, because in the last cell, I saw Loris. I read her name on the badge. If I had met her in ordinary life, I would have definitely asked her out on a date. The next day, I saw her in the hallway. She smiled at me, and I involuntarily smiled back. Then I became angry with myself. For the whole next month, I tried to not even look at her and even avoided her, but Loris was always there, or she would come up to me with some kind of stupid question. Gradually, it became a habit. We would smile at each other when no one was looking, exchange words when no one was listening. During room inspections, I secretly began leaving little surprises for her chewing gum under the pillow, and a bar of chocolate under the blanket. Sometimes we managed to meet in the courtyard behind the church and talk privately for about five minutes. Soon I caught myself thinking that I was only coming back to work for these encounters. I really wanted to make her comfortable. Loris told me that she often spent time in the library in the mornings and that there was almost never anyone else around. One morning on my way to work, I stopped for the best donuts in the city and delicious coffee. I knew that she had been longing for those even more than Big Macs or pizza. Loris told me later that it was the best breakfast she had had in a year. One day, she asked me to send her a postcard. On my day off, I chose the cutest one I could find and wrote that I couldn't wait for the day when I could give it to her in person. I signed the card with my initials in reverse order and sent it without a return address. The most difficult thing for me was not exposing our correspondence, but one day, I almost ruined everything. My partner Flint, as usual, had begun poking fun at the prisoners. He mentioned Loris. I could barely restrain myself from making him take his words back. It's not easy for me to admit it. But sometimes, I even thought about arranging for her to escape so that she no longer had to live in this dump with all these people. Although neither of the two of us had made any mistakes, one day, the worst happened. That day, we received an order to completely search every room. All of the women at the time were in the yard. I searched Loris' bed. In a box under the bed, I found my postcard and couldn't help but smile. But there were other cards too, more than 20, and all without a return address. I began comparing the initials of the names on those that were signed with the names of other wardens. I found more than 12 matches. I couldn't even bring myself to ask Loris for an explanation, and I quit two weeks later. Now I'm looking for a job that I like and where I work with men. I just want to forget about Loris. Thank you for listening to my story.
Hi, I'm Michael. I'm 27 and soon my dating life will ruin me. After all, for every date with a girl, I pay her at least a thousand dollars and I just can't stop it. Here's how I ended up in this situation. I work for my father's law firm and in the future the family business should be mine. Working 50 hours a week is not at all what I wanted, but otherwise my old man will leave me with nothing. Living up to his expectations my whole life, I've never done what I love. He always decided where I would go to school, what kind of sport to do, and with whom to be friends. Only on Saturday evening could I be myself. But now, because of one such Saturday, I risk losing everything for which I have strived for so many years. That Saturday, as usual, I was at the club and, as usual, left there with a girl. In the morning, we parted ways. I had already learned how to end these flings long ago by not leaving hope for a next time. But on Tuesday, I received an email from her to my work mail. She sent a revealing photo and a caption that read, Let's do it again. This is Madeline. Where did you get my email address? I asked. She replied and said that I could not even imagine what else she had on me. She had arranged for us to meet at 8 o'clock in the most famous restaurant in the city. It took considerable effort for me to reserve a table that same evening. Madeline's makeup, clothes, hairstyle, I never would have met up with her again. But in this case, it was not my decision. Since I wasn't planning to linger, I told her that I would only have a cup of coffee. She said she wanted a glass of white wine, a salad, and a thousand dollars. I could pay with a check, and not necessarily in that order. I was about to laugh, but changed my mind, given her arrogant and confident look. Without letting me answer, she said that she had a video of our entire Saturday night, and the most interesting and exciting fragments would certainly arrive by mail to both my father and all my employees if I did not meet her requirements that day. I told her that I first had to see this video in order to decide whether it was worth even half the amount she was asking. $1,000. This is the price for the opportunity to see it first. And perhaps you'll be the only one, was her answer. That evening in the restaurant, she got everything she ordered, including the check which I wrote. In the morning, a video file showed up in my email. Yes, it was definitely worth the money. Then another message. She had made another appointment at the restaurant. I was seething with rage because I already paid her. What did she want from me now? She asked me for another $1,000. I could hardly restrain myself from making a scene. With that attitude, you didn't have to come at all, Madeline said. And send me the money right away. The total value of this video is a million dollars. Either pay it all up front or get ready for many more meetings to come. If you don't do it, I will send this file to your father, colleagues, friends, I will post it on every site there is. After that, you won't just lose your father's business. You'll never be able to work in any law firm again. Well, except maybe as a janitor. Two months have passed since that second meeting, and in that time, there have been eight more. It's not hard to calculate how much it cost me. You're probably wondering what is on that video, and how am I stuck in all this? I reached out to my sources and found out that Madeline's brother had been practicing with his father not so long ago. Obviously, after that, one of them came up with the idea to set me up and get some easy money. Meeting in the club, the hotel room, at the time, it seemed funny to me. But now this joke will either ruin me or destroy my career and deprive me of my inheritance. I don't know how to stop all this. What would you do in my place if you were blackmailed by a girl who threatened to show everyone a video that would simply destroy you?